Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Casey. We're building our own two-story stick frame house. And clearing land for our farm, Cornucopia Orchards. So let's go take a look at the decking. Just arrived, I wanna show you guys. The um, color we picked out um, is like a two-tone brown with a little bit of black streaking in it. It's really, really pretty. As these things often turn out, it's not what the picture showed. So here it is. And I'll give you a couple of angles on this. Some different lighting conditions. So you have to get really close in, and I mean really close in, in my opinion, to detect that there's any variation in color on these boards. And it's supposed to be a lot. I'll put up a picture of what it, it showed it was online, but I'm not seeing like this is the entire batch is this way. I'm not saying it looks bad. I like it, but it's not what we ordered. So the really interesting part now is, you know, do we choose to keep it? Um, the sales people at Lowe's, you know, I, they're my former coworkers and I know it can be a hassle to fix this sort of thing, but it's our house. And, um, you know, is Casey gonna like it? Will she like it more than what we had originally ordered? My guess is that she's gonna say she, she likes it if I do. All right, Damien, you're gonna help load? True. So you like it? You think it'll go good with the blue? Yes. Okay. Sounds like a stamp of approval. We'll get it installed. So we kind of laid this out just so we can see what we're working with here. Got a little chunk left of the third board put on on the outside. And uh, we're going to do two boards, two boards, two boards, two boards, um, mitered together, best we can around the post. And then we have eight foots that come all the way across in between. And we have a little bit more blocking we discover we need to do in that run, one here in the corner and one over there. We'll get that blocking put in and then we're gonna just chalk line along and see where we need to be on this edge. And then dad can do all the fancy cuts for the corners and such and I can run along and just start installing the middle all the way across. The design we chose for this porch is both an aesthetic and a cost decision. Commonly, composite decking seems to come in 8 foot, 12 foot, and 16 foot lengths, and we needed 10 feet. And rather than buy 10 foot boards and waste 2 feet, we chose to ring the center 8 feet with two boards all the way around and use only 8 foot boards. The solid edge came in only 8 foot and 16 foot lengths and for whatever reason the manufacturer wanted more than $100 for the 16 foot board solid edge but only $27 for the 8 foot. Our design choice finished and confirmed to work, we got started. Short daylight hours and cold temps cut us short but getting the outside figured out and the center prepped is a good start. So 
with these fasteners, one thing I found is if I just kind of leave them be on this uh, decking, the Trex style decking, this is not Trex, but that style composite, you do get a little bump on the side. Um, and you gotta be really careful. So I have one up here, I'm gonna have to sand down where the tool lifted up so it wasn't perfectly flat. And that meant that the angle of drive was into the top of the board. So you gotta be careful of that. And then if you, you can still need to be driven more apparently, that would help. So if you just hit it with a hammer a couple times, that does seem to reduce the appearance on the sides. So I'll be doing that where I can going forward. It pulls out quite a bit of the material these screws do. So they are they don't have a sharp start. You can kind of see that on the tip here probably against my hand. So they start a little bit hard, but they do a pretty good job. And it means that it's a lot cheaper of a system than using the hidden fasteners. And you can use them on boards like this where it isn't grooved on the side. These ones are all solid, these eight foots. A little teeny bit cheaper than grooved. Um, but it will bump out your spacer from one to the next if it's if it's out like that so that will help reduce it by hammering i've not kept up on all the dust and debris that's accumulated in the house on the second floor and in the attic casey makes short work of it and this is the 3 16th spacer um so if you like a broader spacing um, that one is fine i might actually go with there's a second version that's got a a different spacing And you can see that this has got a, a, a limiter. That's how far you're supposed to drive it is that far, which is nice. It's a very well thought out tool. In practice, there are some pieces and parts to it that are less than perfect, but it's probably any of these technologies really. now ready to install the remainder of the trim around the outside remember these two are the only ones that are installed um, right now and then we just we got everything kind of calibrated got our string line for the side those two are installed as well just need to cut on the end and so what we're doing is we're we're gonna place this board and we're gonna get that one installed and then you use that to make sure we have the right spacing for this outside and it will butt this one um, and give us the right spacing there. And then we'll actually install this board next. Um, I'll just make sure that we've got you know this one and that one ready. And then pre-place the screws into the inside edge on that board. And because you can't you can't fit that, that tool, the camo tool, up against the wall, it doesn't work.
So for this job, cutting out the tops here when it's already been installed um, for the windows. I use the fairly aggressive um, spider uh, blade. You can see it's got some nice big fat notches in it. Um, great for wood and um, just a lot easier and honestly cleaner. Still very messy, but honestly cleaner than using the router would have been. I did enjoy using the router when you, know, you lay out your walls flat and then stand the walls up. I think that's perfect application for that. So still dealing with the uh, injury that I've got um, to my left upper ribs. Casey's gonna be out here helping me with this. And really it's a two person job in general anyway, but we're gonna try and get these two covered windows in today and those two covered windows in today. And they're our first ones that we're gonna have done. Um, pretty muddy outside. And uh, I, I'd like to kind of get, you know, some stuff set up before we try and do, you know, say even just these ones, which are not not covered, have a little bit nicer day for the tape to be able to stick because it does not stick when it's wet um, and even the caulk to be able to go on really nice. So, but these are covered, which is gonna be really nice. So a couple of details. So first thing I wanna talk about with these windows being under the cover is that there is different um, standards and your window manufacturer may direct you to do certain things that another window manufacturer won't. So these are mill guard windows and they basically direct you to follow a specific set of codes when installing your windows. So we've got our, our sill flashing um, ready to go and we have a couple of options as to how we finish out the, the rest of it. Um, and we're just gonna kind of go a little bit overkill, but not a thousand percent overkill on these covered windows. Um, so exposed edge zip tape or zip board can swell when in um, perpetual um, contact with water. And we had seen some of that on a couple of edges. Um, like this one did swell before we got this covered. Um, and that's typical of OSB over time, even a good system like this. So I've seen other builders who um, tape this before they put on their, their windows. Um, we're not going to worry about doing that under here uh, because the, I mean, the chances of a driving rain coming in down through the forest, angling itself to get in underneath here on any of these windows is very small. I probably will do that on the windows over here though. And you can do a slope sill, you can do a pan. Um, we're not doing slope sills, modern windows and um, integrated air and water barrier systems. Um, you know, essentially are, are designed to where that should not be necessary and it adds extra complication and extra cost. What we are gonna do here is we're going to prep, finish prepping um, by putting a bead of caulk all the way down all the way up, not here, and all the way across on the top. And then the window is going to be set into that space. Um, we're gonna use pan head cabinet screws um, instead of nails because I am clumsy and I don't wanna break a window and then cry myself to sleep at night because I could have used a screw and I used a, a nail. Once the windows are placed in um, to their locations, we will have one person move to the inside um, and then basically get some shims underneath it. We'll get a level on it, make sure it's leveled and plumb. And that these, all, all these windows are doubled up. So we gotta make sure that it can be matched to the window next to it. I gave myself a little extra space on the vertical and we have a half inch space per manufacturer instructions. So a quarter on each side on the horizontal. And once these windows are in and screwed all the way up with the caulk behind the flange, um, then we put on tape that's gonna go down, down, then across the top, um, but again, not across the bottom. So as Casey applies this caulk line, she's just going for, you know, like a nice uh, full quarter inch to where when the, when the flange contacts the caulk, it, it gets a, you know, a little bit of push out, just a little bit. We don't want to make a big mess, but we also want to make sure that it's, it's full and that that has good contact the whole flange across. And that should be your first layer of defense against water getting back behind the flange and into the interior of the structure. We're going to be picking up some big stretch um, and we're going to use that on all the other windows. Right now we don't have it and we're just going to use this caulk right here. Should do just fine. Thank you. 
struggle. So you'll need to measure how much is on the top right now so we know exactly what we're working with. And we've got an inch and a half. Between the... Yeah. Well, I messed these up pretty bad then. Transparency. Um, we cut these rough opens extra, extra large, and I forgot. So we are, <laughs> you can see we've added some tape up here. That's because we actually had to put a filler piece in. And that way, you know, it, there isn't really any, anything getting around the holes because we'll fill them with screws, but they're also already caulk filled. Yeah. Ready? All right, go inside okay. and we'll move it side to side before I get this whole flange. Move this side to side as we need to. Uh, actually, it's pretty good. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and slide it in. And obviously, it is going to have to come up. So get your shims ready. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Now we're trying to split the difference between the top and bottom. If there's not enough shims from doing that, there's more over there on the rolling cart. These are quarter inch shims, so that should be perfect. Uh, we we're probably sitting at three eighths on the top. So now we've got the window more or less we wanted on the inside as far as the spacing, which determines your interior reveal when you put your trim on and make sure that it's nice and, and vertical is the next step. So we're going to check plumb. That is really good. Check both sides just in case. That is good. And then last, we'll check our our box edge here. Oh boy. You get around the little bad things you at the could, bottom. You could check the top. Okay, that is great. That's one thing I want to show you. If I can get you in close enough here. is when we go to put these in, there's already some caulk behind, but you can see it pushes out. You want to see that push out and then... When the pan head goes in, the caulk is also coming out around the screw. So that gives it a very nice seal. So we're going to put in just a couple screws here and we'll check the operation of the window. Casey. Would you be so kind as to check the operation of the sash? Okay. Does that feel good? Ew. Nice and smooth? Yep, nice and smooth. Okay. So screws are all attached. Um, one thing Casey was pointing out is there isn't a screw right by the corners, and that one actually has two holes in the flange, um, right, like as if it were a fur screw. That tend they tend to break, and a lot of manufacturers, I believe, including Millguard, say don't put those screws in. So we're not. Casey's going around and trying to get a lot of the extra caulk. We probably did put on a little bit too much off the flange, so that the zip tape has good adhesion um, when we go to uh, put the the tape flashing over the top of the flange on. So here's the interior and the reveal I was talking about and uh, neither my skills at framing nor the window are 100% perfect, um, probably most of my framing skills, um, but we're pretty close. And I am pleased that we have at least an eighth, this is the narrowest point right there, and a, a more like a, the quarter that we're looking for the whole way around the window. And that's just um, enough for a good 
bit of um, insulation. All right, so we've got the second window set up and we are, we are plumbing and leveling. And the frame on this one, there's a side that is, is out and off. But we still have pretty good reveal and everything looks like it's gonna come out okay. So what we're doing here, that was too much. This corner does a backup. And I'll try just, just doing this corner of the other one. level. There's a very minimal amount. I think it's been caused by this. So these corners on the windows, the precast, sometimes they're pretty extreme. This one's basically flat. And this one has like a, I don't know, a 16th, almost an eighth. So these next ones are larger. Those two and the three around the corner of the dining are two and a half feet. These are a full three foot wide. So the boards on either side, this was the very first wall that we did. And somehow when we built this wall, we allowed each of these three to have just the slightest lit like tilt. I don't think it's going to be enough to make it to where we have too big of a gaps on any of the sides, but we're gonna try dry fitting the window in both first to see if there's gonna be any problems. Let's try this close one first. Okay. You in? There we go. Can you hold? Yes. Actually not that bad. Okay. Hold it while it's tipping, or you want to go looking at it? I'll go look at it. Ah, that's better. Let's check the sides. Well, that says there's a bunch of going on there. It says up here that we are plumb. You can go down here, look at that. Interesting. It disagrees. Check this side. Look, up, look at this. Ah, your window Funky. There's some bowing or some movement, which may have been from the delivery or it may just be natural to the window or whatever, um, as you go up. So we're gonna try and just make sure it's perfectly plumb, especially on the center, on the side where it's butting up against its friend. And you're gonna really see it in that little bitty space of siding in between if they're off. So I'm gonna just start it on the bottom and get that to get it really nice and plumb. Um, it's already uh, level, so here we go. And mom, yeah. uh, just dust them and inside it together. I think if we just slide it this way. So this window was leaning kind of like straight in and then back as you went up or bowed like that. And, and that's at the frame level that, you know, we didn't have a perfectly square opening cause it did have some tilt, but you know, that, that, uh, ended up being a real challenge to get this one installed nice and plumb and level with good operation of the sash on the interior. And so we, what we ended up doing is we ended up starting from the corner 
and then working it and as much as we could without putting too much pressure on we shimmed here to push this this way and we shimmed up there at the top to try and hold it at the top and you can't put too much pressure on the window um we considered uh replacement but i don't think it's bad enough we have to worry about it but you you do windows will have some play within their frames and you you do have to watch for that and and make sure that you have your window plumbed and sometimes that means making the window plumbed <laughs> We are getting um, tape. We're gonna run it down the center. Um, this is a three inch, three and a half inch, four inch, something like that roll of zip. And our windows happen to be spaced perfectly for that. So that's nice. Um, you can see that Casey's got that one lapped up um, to where it's matching the previous tape. And then there will be a tape that runs across the top when we're done. So it's gonna roll that down. And then I will probably spatula that one since it's pretty hard to get in there and roll in that center void. Um, but the tape is just coming to near the edges and then sealing, it's gonna seal nice onto the um, sheathing behind that. So that's coming out really nice. So the goal with these windows is you're you're making the to where the water cannot come in and should it come in, it has a way to get back out again. So you've got your, your bottom sill taped behind so the water doesn't, if it gets in, it doesn't damage the wood. It has a place to sit that's water resistant and then it comes out through the bottom which is neither caulked nor taped. Um, the sides, you have caulk behind the flange to prevent any water that somehow got behind from getting around and onto the sides of the windows. And then you tape down on top, sealing from window to window or sealing to the sheathing and to the, the window on the sides. And then you lap over that at the top with a continuous piece of tape to draw the water down over the window sill and then down the center or down the sides. And then finally, of course, once we have um, trim going up, then we'll have flashing that goes, metal flashing that goes across as well to divert the water. So it's, it's a full system. We've had several different brands of vinyl windows. Milgard stands out to us as well-built, reasonably priced and attractive. We chose to keep the window plan for the house rather than putting in bigger picture windows because re-engineering headers and paying for bigger panes of glass didn't seem like a beneficial expense. Smaller windows are easier to install and cheaper to repair or replace. Just for reference, this is a clear view screen that was not damaged. This is a screen replacement that James did. He did it with loving care and it's great, but it's not the same. You get a lot more light and view through this one than you do the replacements. Um, so I just wanted you guys to be able to see this before I make you reorder all of them. Thanks, Thanks. for watching. Oh, <laughs> see you next time.